No, my name is lost. By treason's tooth bare, gnawn and canker bit. Yet am I noble as the adversary I come to cope. Which is that adversary? What's he that speaks for Edmund, Earl of Gloucester? Himself. What sayest thou to him? Draw thy sword. That is my speech offend a noble heart. Thy arm may do thee justice. Here is mine. He draws his sword. Behold, it is the privilege of mine honours, my oath and my profession. I protest, maugre thy strength, youth, place and eminence. Despite thy victor sword and fire new fortune, thy valour and thy heart, thou art a traitor, false to thy gods, thy brother and thy father, conspirant against this high illustrious prince, and from the extremest upward of thy head to the descent and dust beneath thy foot, a most toad-spotted traitor. Say thou no, this sword this arm and my best spirit are bent to prove upon my heart whereto I speak, thou liest. In wisdom I should ask thy name, but since thy outside looks so fair and warlike, and that thy tongue some say of breeding breathes, what safe and nicely I might well delay by rule of knighthood, I disdain and spurn. Back do I toss those treasons to thy head, with the hell-hated lie o'erwhelm thy heart, which, for they yet glance by and scarcely bruise, this sword of mine shall give them instant way, where they shall rest for ever. Trumpets, speak! Alarums, fights, Edmund falls. To Edgar, about to kill Edmund. Save him! Save him! This is mere practice, Gloucester. By the law of arms thou wast not bound to answer an unknown opposite. Thou art not vanquished, but chosen and beguiled. Shut your mouth, dame, or with this paper I shall stop it. Hold, sir. To Goneril. Thou, worse than any name, read thine own evil. No tearing, lady, I perceive you know it. Say if I do. The laws are mine, not thine. Who can arraign me for it? Most monstrous. Know'st thou this paper? Ask me not what I know. Exit Goneril. Go after her. She's desperate. Govern her. Exit, officer. What you have charged me with, that have I done. And more, much more. The time will bring it out. Tis past, and so am I. But what art thou that hast this fortune on me? If thou art noble, I do forgive thee. Let's exchange charity. I am no less in blood than thou art, Edmund. If more, the more thou hast wronged me. My name is Edgar, and thy father's son. The gods are just, and of our pleasant vices make instruments to plague us. The dark and vicious place where thee he got cost him his eyes. Thou hast spoken right, tis true. The wheel is come full circle. I am here. Methought thy very gate did prophesy our royal nobleness. I must embrace thee. Let sorrow split my heart if ever I did hate thee or thy father. Worthy prince, I note. Where have you hid yourself? How have you known the miseries of your father? By nursing them, my lord. List a brief tale. And when tis told, oh, that my heart would burst. The bloody proclamation to escape that followed me so near. Oh, our lives witness. That with the pain of death we'd hourly die rather than die at once, taught me to shift into a madman's rags, to assume a semblance that very dogs disdained, and in this habit that I my father with his bleeding rings, their precious stones new lost, became his guide, led him, begged for him, saved him from despair, never, oh, fault, revealed myself unto him until some half-hour passed when I was armed. Not sure, though hoping of this good success, I asked his blessing, and from first to last told him my pilgrimage. But his flawed heart, alack, too weak the conflict to support, took two extremes of passion, joy and grief, burst smilingly. This speech of yours hath moved me, and shall perchance do good. But speak you on, 
You look as you had something more to say. If there be more, more woeful, hold it in, for I am almost ready to dissolve hearing of this. This would have seemed a period to such as love, not sorrow, but another, to amplify too much, would make much more and top extremity. Whilst I was big in clamour, came there a man who, having seen me in my worst estate, shunned my abhorred society. But then, finding through twas that so endured with his strong arms, he fastened on my neck and bellowed out as he burst heaven, threw him on my father, told the most piteous tale of Lear and him that ever ear received, which in recounting his grief grew puissant, and the strings of life began to crack. Twice then the trumpet sounded, and there I left him tranced. But who was this? Kent, sir, the banished Kent, who in disguise followed his enemy king and did him service improper for a slave. Enter a gentleman with a bloody knife. Help! Help! Oh, help! What kind of help? Speak, man. What means that bloody knife? Tis hot. It smokes. It came even from the heart of... Oh, she's dead. Who dead? Speak, man. Your lady, sir, your lady. And her sister by her is poisoned. She hath confessed it. I was contracted to them both. All three now marry in an instant. Here comes Kent. Enter Kent. Produce their bodies, be they alive or dead. This judgment of the heaven that makes us tremble touches us not with pity. Exit, gentlemen. I am come to bid my king and master I good night. Is he not here? Great thing of us forgot. Speak, Edmund, where's the king? And where's Cordelia? Goneril's and Regan's bodies are brought out. Whack! Why thus? Yet Edmund was beloved. The one the other poisoned for my sake, and after slew herself. Even so, cover their faces. I pant for life. Some good I mean to do. Despite of mine own nature, quickly send, be brief in it, to the castle. For my writ is on the life of Lear, and on Cordelia. Nay, send in time. Run, run, oh run. To who, my lord? Who has the office? Send thy token of reprieve. I have thought on. To an officer. Take my sword. Give it to the captain.